200,000 gathered along the west side of Central Park in New York City for the 2018 Women's March, the one-year anniversary of the march, falling on the first-year mark of the presidency of Donald Trump. Last year, we were in despair. We marched in sadness and in fear. This year, we're marching in strength. The Women's March, a capstone to an unprecedented year of heated debate over policies that affect every American to events that rock the country. Health care, Charlottesville, Las Vegas, tax reform. There's too many. Yeah. It's every day. It's overload. Minnett and Britta Marsh, both members of Gays Against Guns, met because of their political activism. For Marsh, the return of thousands ready to march through the streets of New York City is a welcome sign. We have to start showing up to our allies' marches, to our allies' protests, to our allies' voicing against this awful president. Maddie Weiss, a 16-year-old student from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, has become more politically active over the last year, despite the disapproval by her fellow students. It's kind of like everyone at school telling me, don't do this, this is embarrassing, you're going to get made fun of, and me kind of saying, I don't care. Yeah, that's, this is what I stand for and I'm not going to change to please you. A sentiment her father, Matt, fully supports. Don't tell my girls that they can't do anything and be anything that they want. Maddie is in the process of starting a political club at her school that is more representative of all groups, she says. There is not a lot of representation for Democrats and liberals and feminists and like people of other races. It's all very like white conservative. While Maddie is organizing locally, Beverly Neufeld, president of Power Her New York, is focusing her efforts statewide. There are 100 organizations across New York State working for women's economic equality. Reproductive rights groups, domestic violence groups, equal pay groups, because we know it's a complicated problem. We have to work together to solve it. A coalition of organizations, Neufeld says, will be organizing support and momentum for achieving a number of goals and legislative priorities. I'm looking at what we can do, and in New York we can do a lot. At the same time, we have to fight these assault on our rights. One of those assaults seen by those attending the Women's March is the rights of the Dreamers, undocumented immigrants who were brought to the U.S. as minors. A topic, Elda McQuaid, who escaped from Cuba with her family when she was eight years old, feels personally. So I was one of these people once, and um, I know, I teach children that are uh, dreamers, and they're, they're part of America. We need to give them the same rights that they deserve. However, not everyone at the Women's March agrees with the self-described woke grandma. I want them to leave. If they're such wonderful people, they'll do a lot of good back in their own country. I'm 50-50 on that, to be truthful with you. We want a wall first, and then we can deal with DACA second. Roughly a dozen supporters of Donald Trump protested as women's marchers passed through Columbus Circle. One of the supporters was from InfoWars, a noted conspiracy site who carried a flag with a mic and GoPro attached. The interactions between the two sides intensifying at times. Police eventually moved to create some distance between the two sides. The tensions, the motivation, and the activism, all powering the march to the polls this November. Matt Reich, The Impact News.